Hey guys, what's going on? Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Skillet and Skillet Proxy communication properly. So first, you have to put your Skillet Proxy jar into your Bungie Cord plugins folder, not your spigots, the Bungies. So now that I have it here, it after running it, it will generate this folder you got a scripts folder which should be empty, your variables which uh, are going to be released in a later version. It's basically a way to share variables between your network servers. It's really handy and stay tuned for that. So now let's go into our config. We have a few options here by default. The first one is debug, which should be false by default. Uh, it's true for me because I have a, a dev build. Um, basically, debug shows you all the packets and information that is sent between in the console. The version is an ID I need to tell what config you have. The port, uh, I'll tell you in a second. The allowed tries is basically how many times uh, Skillet will try to attempt to send data to Skillet Proxy. If it doesn't, in this many tries, Skillet Proxy will confirm that server as being offline. Now you have disabled tracking, which basically, if a server does fail and this happens three times, Skillet Proxy will terminate that server from being existing in its files or it'll keep tracking it. So if this is true, it'll send a console error as it says here, but it's harmless. Uh, it's basically just a faster way of tracking servers states from online to offline really quick. Uh, I don't know why this is an option base. I just added it because why not? Uh, it's better to keep it on false. You can turn it on true. It doesn't do much. Uh, it speeds it up a little faster. It's true, but not much. Global, vari or global scripts are basically, you can put a script in here. So I'll do that right now. I have a script right here called test. Let me put that into my uh, bungee cord scripts folder right here. So as you see, it has all this stuff in it. A few, few information. So make sure this is true. And then all these scripts in this folder will get loaded on all of your uh, script servers. So let's delete this and I'll show you later that it'll generate just from being on the bungee cord. And people are wondering where the variables are saved on this. It basically just loads uh, this script on all your network servers. It doesn't actually use the variables from the bungee cord. It just sh shares the script between it and loads it and unloads it. So now you have the network variables which are basically a shared way like I said of sharing between servers. Uh, enabled is keeping it on true and like <laughs> keeping it on true what the heck. Uh, you just enable it there mm -hmm. and allowed tries. Uh, this basically allows you to override a variable so like say you do something like set test to true and then say later you want to set it test to false this will deny that from being set to false it'll always stay true it's just a feature that I had for future and this is not released at the moment that I'm doing this so <laughs> you'll have to wait for that so that leads us to the port you need to copy this. This can be any port, say like 1337 or something. It can be any port you want. But for the tutorial, I'm going to use the default port. So now you take that port and you go into your script file where Skillet is running. And you go into your Skillet proxy. Now this is the files that you need to use. The host is going to be the host of the bungee cord. So if you have like a different, if your bungee cord is running on a different machine than this, 
uh, server that I'm in right now, then you need to define your host here without the port. And since my bungee cord's on the same machine, I just use localhost. And this is the port that must match what we have on the bungee cord. The heartbeat is basically a quick way of defining how fast packets are sent between skillet and skillet proxy. The allowed tries defines how fast this goes as well. So say we have this number at 10. It will send however many packets you have defined at a heart rate of 10. And if it fails, it will trigger one of these allowed tries. The quicker you have this, the more of a chance it has of failing because of your latency or how fast your server is running or so many different reasons why. So if you have your heartbeat, say one or so, you should probably raise your allowed tries to something like 10 or like seven. It's just a back safe kind of thread safe area. So now that you have allowed tries set, and we're gonna keep this at 50. 50 is still pretty fast, but it's uh, in seconds or ticks. I can't remember which one I set it as, but it's it's still pretty good. 50 is a good default. Uh, disconnect is basically skillet proxy will ignore a server completely if the disconnect is true. So if skillet, like your one of your spigot servers go offline, it will send that data to skillet proxy and skillet proxy will keep checking if it's online state changes at all. So you can change that. Uh, and if you delete this file, it should regenerate with some, uh, with some comments. I don't know why it didn't for me. I'll maybe look into that. That's probably a bug, but there should be a ton of comments on this. That'll help you in, help you out in the long run. Events. This is basically what the evaluate effect, the max players, the bungee cord events, and a ton of other stuff you use. This is v very much needed for all your servers because it also uses the global scripts. This needs to be enabled for the global scripts and the variables as well. So now the event port, this is where everyone, I mean, everyone gets wrong usually not everyone but most people basically the event port is what needs to be ran on this server this port can't be the same as this one uh, it can be if it's not on the same machine as your bungee cord if it is on the same machine as your bungee cord this port cannot match this one and for every one of your spigot servers this event port needs to be different. It can't be the same unless they're, unless each server is on its own machine. Then you can put this port to whatever you want. It can match this if it's on a different machine as your bungee cord and your other servers. If you have a shared, uh, shared machine between multiple servers of your bungee cord, this needs to be changed. <sighs> Basically, you should just keep this different for each server and now the global script reload message is basically it'll tell you that a script reloaded in the config so now let's start these two bad boys and as you see we will go into the script folder here and once this is the skillet proxy and this is skillet once uh, Skillet enables here, it will run the global scripts and send data to this server. You'll see all the packets and stuff being sent between it because I have debug mode on. So it's connected and now we're receiving a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, I found a bug. Uh, you have to have a file in your scripts folder on your spigot server just like an empty one. I'll fix that in a future version. But basically, yeah, uh, it was being weird. Basically, I had to have a file inside the scripts folder. I couldn't have it empty. 
Uh, but you see that it's sending packets, it's sending heartbeats every 50 ticks or so. And it says that a global variable or a global script was created for test. So the test gets loaded right here on every server. And yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. We'll see ya.